All right, now we're going to move on from the sample space to calculating proportions from a binomial distribution. So I've got a sample question up here, and this question is, a study is conducted to assess the impact of caffeine consumption, smoking, alcohol consumption, and physical activity on cardiovascular disease. Suppose that 40% of participants consume caffeine and smoke. If participants, if eight participants are evaluated, what is the probability that, and our first question is, what's the probability that exactly half of them consume caffeine and smokes? So one thing that's really important to know about the binomial distribution is we always measure our proportion in terms of the number of successes. And a success in this case actually kind of sounds like a failure. The success here is that they smoke and um, consume caffeine. <laughs> so uh, we need to frame it in terms of how we determine a success here. And so if we're looking at how many of them uh, use caffeine and or consume caffeine and smoke, then um, then we just need to take the total number, which is eight, and uh, split it in half. So that's that answer is four. So we need to know how many. Uh, what's the probability that we will get exactly four? Uh, and to do that, it's actually in Excel very simple. Uh, we'll use the the binomial distribution uh, function, and so it's binom.dist, and we need to tell it. Uh, the number of uh, successes we're looking to find, and that is four. We said half of them, eight minus four, eight divided by two, either way you look at it, it's four, okay? Then we need to know how many trials there are, and the question gave us that answer. It said if eight participants are evaluated, so there's eight, and then we just need to know the probability of a success. In this case, smoking and drinking alcohol being successful, so that's 0.4 or 40%. Right? Then we have to tell the function whether or not we want to use a cumulative distribution, uh, set that to true or false, and in this case we want it to be false. All right, close parenthesis, and we'll get our answer. And the answer to this one is 0.2322 or 23.2%. Now, I'm going to pause there before I go on to the next two questions because I want to show you that I visualized some of this. And so one of the resources I recommend, and I'll put the link in the description of the video, is a resource built on a Shiny application uh, at uh, albany.edu, and they'll give you the chart, the graph of your data if you give it the number of trials and the probability of success. So in this case, we're looking at what is the probability that we would get exactly four successes, and we said it's roughly 23%, and that lines up with our chart pretty well. In Excel, what I've done is I know the full range of excess successes. I could have none, or I could have up to eight. So then I've just gone and used the binomial distribution function and calculated all of the possible uh, proportions, right, or probabilities here. Okay, so now I can easily reference it. I could even go to this four and see that that's the answer right there, plain and simple. I'm gonna make this just a tad bit smaller as far as decimal places go to match my answer, okay? So that would be the answer to the first question. Now, the second one says, at most six consume caffeine and smoke. Okay, at most six consume caffeine and smoke. So now remember, I need to measure this in terms of successes. So what I'm going to do is calculate uh, the uh, probability that might spell my function correctly, that I would have uh, seven successes, exactly seven successes. So uh, I'm going to type in just manually type in seven. And then the number of trials is eight. It's nice when I have all of this referenced. It goes really fast. Okay. And that answer should match to some extent the answer here, and I am just going to leave it at uh, five decimal places even though this one's at four. right? And then I can copy this down, do the same thing for eight, just to make one minor change, uh, and that's the cell references here got moved down. Okay, good. So now I have the answer. I just need to add, uh, add the two of those uh, together. And so we'll go and we'll auto sum those. And once I've got those two added together, because my question is uh, at most six, so I'm looking for uh, the proportion that uh, of x greater than six, I just add seven and eight, uh, the, the probability of those successes, and I get 0 0.0852. Okay, let's move on to the, the third question here. 
And that's the exactly three do not consume caffeine or smoke. And this is where the successes really are sort of weird because remember, consuming caffeine and smoking is a success. So we need to say eight minus three uh, because if five are successes, three of them are failures or three of them did not consume. So now I can go ahead, since I know that's what I'm looking for, use binomial distribution again. I'm looking for five out of the eight trials that are probability of 40% of succeeding and make this again false. Not true, false. There we go. And close it off with a parenthesis and we get uh, point one two three nine, which is uh, right here. Okay, so that's a very quickly how to uh, do some, I'd say fairly simple, but a wide range of different uh, problems with a binomial distribution. I think the hardest part here is remembering we're measuring in successes and we always need to convert the number that we're looking for um, into the successes we want. Uh, when we're uh, looking at a range above the successes that we want, we need to add the successes above it. Um, I like graphing it out. I think putting all of the successes in a table and then looking at it in terms of a, of a chart uh, helps to visualize exactly what it is we're looking for. Okay, that's it on the binomial distribution front. Now we're going to move on to doing uh, normal distribution.